Gracias, Antonio. It's great to be here. I am so proud of all of you. Estoy muy, muy orgulloso de todos. En particular, las mujeres. <laughs> all of the wonderful, wonderful women. Uh, and before I make my presentation, I want to just recognize one of your wonderful women here who's my dearest, dearest friend and who is a stalwart Latina uh, and who started actually in the broadcasting industry with me 37 years ago, Isabel Duran. Isabel, my dear. <laughs> uh, and, and just one little uh, professional note, Isabel and I, were in the same class at Columbia University with Geraldo. <laughs> and uh, we are, I'm just really, really happy not only that have we survived, but I think we've had a little impact on our industry. And that's what we set out to do 37, 38 years ago. And one of the impacts that I see that we've all had is with organizations like this one. Uh, who would have guessed, uh, Isabel, you know, 35, 38 years ago that we would one day be together in this ballroom in Washington, D.C., recognizing so many incredible and talented people uh, of all ages <laughs> and uh, of all types of media. I'm so proud to be here to celebrate this with you. I am also privileged to be the presenter here to present this marvelous award to Rebecca Aguilar. She is a general assignment reporter with KDFW Fox 4 in Dallas, Texas, and she is being awarded the Broadcast Journalist of the Year Award. Rebecca was named Texas Reporter of the Year two years ago by the Associated Press. She's also won several Emmys for her tenacious style of reporting and her ability to give voice to issues that are often unheard and dismissed. The judges called her reporting sound, consistent, credible, and showed that she is capable of separating herself from the story while still connecting with her subjects. And often, she's able to tell stories that make a difference and spur change for the better. Well, I met Rebecca Aguilar when she started covering domestic violence. In my role here at the Family Place, I saw her do incredible work for victims and to help us get the story and the message out. Well, she's been very supportive of the community, and uh, again, she's she's there for us uh, when there's issues that are uh, that affect the Hispanic community. Uh, she's been there for us to, to give both sides. Uh, one of the issues is again uh, again uh, is immigration. Uh, that was a big story for us, and she was there in the march, and she was there asking the right questions, and uh, she was very supportive in, in, in doing both sides of the story. Well, you know, Rebecca's done a lot of stories over the years, and there's so many, it's really hard to, to, to pick just one, but one, one that's kind of near and dear to my heart is the fact that she's done so many stories over the years with the Child Protective Services. And some of those stories have made tremendous difference in the way CPS in Texas today does business. And I think that she continues to put the pressure on and make sure that those children are still protected. Uh, what I've seen Rebecca do is help raise the issue of family violence in the community, is help tell the story in a way that the viewer understands. It's so important. There are many misconceptions about family violence, but Rebecca helps I really think she helps set those straight and helps cover the issues that a lot of times other people don't want to cover. Very likable, very fair, and we think, uh, again, one of the reasons we accept uh, Rebecca is because she doesn't just do the story for five or ten minutes and leaves. She really does her homework, and, and we respect that from her. I believe that Rebecca is a determined and dogged reporter who believes in going for the story and leaving no stones unturned. And many times she's not only able to get the nuts and bolts of the story, she's also able to get the people end of it. And that makes it a whole story. I want to thank NHJ, Ivan Roman, gracias and NHJ, the members and the executives, thanks for this award. It's, um, you know what, 
I, I don't even want to start crying. But yeah, I've won a lot of awards. This one means a lot because, you know, I'm going to be 50 years old this year. And I've seen a lot of. <laughs> I've seen a lot of women come and go in this business, especially Latinas, a lot of Latinos. And it's difficult that, you know, we watch the networks and we still don't have enough of us on there. We don't have them in, in the big markets. Gracias for Gloria Campos. She's the only Latina anchor in our town, you know, in Dallas, Texas. It's sad. There's still a lot, a lot of work we have to do, people. You know, it's not just about us. Um, it's about helping others, you know, really move up, whether it's the newspaper, the radio, the magazines, the websites. We got to help each other. And I don't think in this business it's about, you know, being cheaper, being younger. It's about being just good storytellers. That's all it's, it's about. Um, Stella Chavez is my new hero because, you know what, you're right, it is a bunch of BS. I am also the daughter of illegal immigrants. And if anybody knows Lou Dobbs, tell him I'm proud to be the daughter of immigrants. <laughs> because you know what? When my parents came here from Mexico City and uh, Cuernavaca, um, they didn't have anything. They didn't know the language. They didn't know the culture. But they came here. And, and you know what? They, they did the job. They came here. Uh, we moved up to Ohio. I, you know, that's a, another story how we ended up in Ohio. <laughs> I think the only Mexicanos I saw were at the mall. <laughs> and it was like, I saw a Mexicano today. Uh, but, um, you know, we picked tomatoes. We were poor. And one thing my dad told me is, uh, me dijo, Rebecca, necesitas que te ser orgullosa. Necesitas pasión. Necesitas, nunca debes de tener miedo. He said, have passion, have pride, and never fear anything. And I am one heck of a fearless person. And you know what? That's what you need to be. Whether, you know, these people tackle us on immigration. I know we're not supposed to take sides and all that kind of stuff. But we are the only ones that are the voice for the Latinos, for the immigrants, illegal or not. And so I do want to thank NHJ. I do want to thank my bosses because, you know what? There's some managers that want to do these stories and some who don't. And thank God those managers who are, can be closed-minded, they do open up their ears and think, okay, you know, Rebecca has something here. So I do appreciate them. I guess I should thank Rupert Murdoch because, you know, he does pay me. So, <laughs> you know. Um, so before I leave, and I know where I'm supposed to do this in one minute, but sorry, I'm TV. Um, <laughs> the thing is this. My father and my mother told me, you know what? Leave your mark in this life. And I hope to God, thank you, NHJ, because I think I've made my mark. But before we hit the pearly gates, I know that when God sees me, he's going to say, Rebecca did this, 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 and this. And, well, he better let me in through the gates, because if not, I'm going to push through. But <laughs> I hope that all you guys today look at this and, wonder, and, and say to yourselves, have I made my mark? And if you haven't, make it before it's too late. Gracias.